Hi, thanks for visiting. I'm Nick Labriola. This is my wife, Kim, and we are full-time real estate agents in Tucson, Arizona. We work with Tierra Antigua Realty. We love making content about this great city we live in, and today we are going to be talking about the Catalina Foothills. So, Tucson native. If somebody was new to Tucson and asked you about the Catalina Foothills, what comes to mind? Basically, the views and the desert setting. Um, it's a little higher than the rest of Tucson, so you've got really nice city views. And um, you also have mountain views because you're really close to the Santa Catalina Mountains. What do you think? The first thing that comes to mind for me is larger parcels and more desert settings. And I think a lot of that stems to the history of the place. The Murphy family originally developed the Catalina foothills in about the 1930s, and they purposely plotted larger lots. And it evolved after that, but a lot of what was built tends to be on larger lots. And as you pointed out, it's close to the mountain, so you get great mountain views, but there's rolling topography, and you're also gonna get some great city views. The other thing that I think about is there's a ton to do in the area. There's right. some great shopping. It's a very affluent part of the city, and that's actually one of the more affluent parts of the United States. But there's gonna be restaurants, entertainment, and just a lot to do in the area as well. Hiking, biking opportunities, things like that. So that's probably my first impression. What do you think are some of the major points that, that we should share with the... Uh, well, it's located in unincorporated Pima County, so it's not technically in <clears throat> Tucson. The homes, like Nick said, were, it was developed in the 1920s initially, so um, the oldest homes are probably from about the late 20s to the early 30s, and those would have been the John and Helen Murphy, who hired Josias Jostler as the, the architect. Uh, John and Helen Murphy were the developers. Most of the neighbor or areas up there tend to have, like Nick said, larger lots. Uh, so typically you'd find homes that are on at least an acre, sometimes three or four acres. And then, but there is more recent development where they started building homes a little bit closer together, just depending on where you're at. There's also a lot of townhomes in the area dating back from about the um, late 60s, 70s, and 80s. And then um, there's also a few condo complexes in the area. So the area that we're talking about is basically north of River Road, um, kind of going from about Oracle to the west and then east as far as Sabino Creek, um, which we'll show you on a map. Now what's kind of cool about the area also is it is a more affluent area, but because of the condos and townhomes, there are a variety of price points. So a lot of the townhomes and condos, like Kim said, were probably built in the 70s and 80s. There will be some gated communities. We already talked about a lot of wildlife being in the area. There's also going to be a lot of resorts that we'll talk about later. Golf communities, gated communities, 55 and over. But there's going to be a lot of variety, is my point. Right, and not all of the neighbor area is gated. They're, the newer parts are gated. Um, but in the older parts, a lot of the homes are not gated, and sometimes the individual homes will have gates rather than a whole neighborhood. That's true, too. What um, school districts serve the Catalina Foothills? So it depends on which part of the Catalina Foothills you're in. If you're on the western part of the Catalina Foothills, the school district is going to be Amphi or amphithe Amphitheater. Um, if you're in the southern part of the foothills, it would be Tucson Unified School District, USD. And if you're in the kind of north or eastern portion, you'll most likely um, be in the Catalina Foothills District 16, um, which has a really good reputation. Um, there are also charter schools in the area like BASIS, mm -hmm. and then there's also <clears throat> private schools as well. There's five different mm -hmm. resorts up there. Uh, with hotels and restaurants and entertainment. And so a lot of locals end up going to the resorts on weekends or whatever to, you know, see music playing it there. Mm -hmm. And we don't own a pool and during the summer it gets a little hotter here so there's fewer tourists and oftentimes they'll have really good deals. So sometimes in the summer we'll do a staycation 
and get a room so we can have a pool for the weekend. Right. And that can be kind of a fun, fun thing for locals to do as well. And what are some of the resorts that are here? So I think Hacienda del Sol is probably the oldest one out of the ones we're talking about. Well, that one and the Wyndham Westward Look mm -hmm. Resort, um, those two were actually designed, I believe they were both designed by Josias Jostler back in the 1930s or so. I don't know the exact date. Um, and then in the 1980s, both Ventana Canyon, which would be Lowe's Ventana Canyon, and um, Weston La Paloma, those were developed about in the 80s. Um, there's also Canyon Ranch, which is um, an exclusive kind of where the celebrities go to, you know, for their kind of health spa. We've never visited there, but we hear it's very nice. <laughs> We're not celebrities. <laughs> we hear it's very nice. But um, Nick was talking about, you know, some of the things to do in the area. And one of the popular things to do would be golfing. And there's three golf courses <clears throat> in the area. That would be Ventana Canyon, La Paloma, and then Skyline Country Club. Talking about things to do in the area, the southern border of the foothills is the Rieto River, more or less, and there's a loop that goes around most of Tucson. It's 130, 130 plus miles. miles. So there's a good section right along the Rieto River, which is a multi-use path where you can walk, jog, bike. You can bring your horse there, too. I didn't know you could bring your horse there. That's they have signs there. <laughs> okay. <So it's laughs> I haven't seen any horses. Usually if there's horses, they're in the wash itself. Yeah, that's true. And the Rito River, just so you know, is usually dry. It's called a river, but it's typically it, dry. It will run after, like, usually after monsoon, monsoon. season yeah. or um, when there's a lot of snowpack melting mm -hmm. out of the Catalina uh, mountains, it'll it'll run then, but it's usually dry. So it's called the Chuck Huckleberry Loop, and there are several parks that are along the, the path. One of them is Brandy Fenton. That's there's, the largest, I think. Yeah, and I think there's a splash pad there, so that's a, a really cool park. There's fields, like soccer fields. There's ramadas for having picnics, and you can rent them for parties and stuff like that. And there's that outdoor sculpture park yeah. close to that that they change out the exhibits right. every couple months. So that's kind of a neat thing to check out. Yeah. But that's Brandy Fenton Park. Then there's also the George Mell Park. That has more like um, baseball fields. Um, I think different uh, teams play there, like, you know, kids baseball or softball, I'm not sure, but. Okay, and then also the Rio Vista Park. It's close to the Tucson Racquet Club and it's a natural desert space type of a park that also connects to the loop. And then there's a lot of hiking because you're in the Catalina Mountains. So if you go a little farther <clears throat> east, um, you'll find Sabino Canyon, and that is a very popular place to go hiking. There's a lot of trails and stuff. So Seven Falls is probably the most popular tra hiking trail in Tucson. So that is accessed um, through Sabino Canyon. There's um, Blackett's Ridge, which is a really cool trail. It's that short. a little bit more. It's short, not super strenuous, but. Um, but you are changing elevation on that one. Yeah, there's a lot of um, increase in elevation there. Phone Line Trail, which is a long trail, but um, a it's more flat. It's pretty gradual, yeah. Yeah, and then there's just the tram road which is a paved a road bit. that the tram goes on and you can walk it, you know, early in the morning or like before the tram. You can walk it anytime, but it's to me more fun to walk it when the tram isn't going. And once the tram starts running, they don't allow bicycles any longer. So you've got to time it pretty well so you don't either have tram traffic or bike bicycle. traffic. Right. But Kim and I walk that quite a bit and that's it's about a 7.4 mile round, round trip. trip. Yeah, it's and a good. It's, it's really nice, pretty though. Nice walk. Uh, there's a lot of water there. You know, a couple of times a year, the water stops running, but it's usually has a decent amount of water most of the year. Yeah, and if there's a solid monsoon, sometimes it'll get to the point where you can't pass some of the the bridges. They'll be yeah, too much water for you to pass. If you're walking the tram road, or and this also goes for Seven Falls. You'll want to pay attention to the weather forecast because um, it's if if it's raining in the mountains, it's going to come through, and you could get stuck there. Flash floods. And they'll do like, you know, rescues and stuff like that. But it's just not a great idea to go up there when it's raining or 
And anytime you're hiking in the desert, it's just a good idea to bring plenty of water and let people know, know where you're going. Also in the Catalina Mountains, there is the Pima County Trailhead. Uh, no, Pima Canyon. Did I say Pima County? Yeah. It is in Pima County, <laughs> but it's the Pima Canyon Trailhead. Pima Canyon Trailhead. Yep. Um, there's Finger Rock. I have not hiked that one. I've heard it's pretty difficult. Um, there's Pontotoc Canyon and Ventana Canyon. We've got a lot more information, so stay tuned. We just wanted to let you know we are licensed real estate agents, so if there's any other questions that you have about Tucson or the Catalina Foothills or anything in general, we're happy to answer them. Please just uh, give us a call or email us. You'll find our contact information below. And if you find this information helpful, please tap that like button. It helps us so much. And if you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe. That way you can be notified when new videos come out. There is upscale shopping like we talked about earlier and one of the more popular malls would be an outdoor mall called La Encantada. It has the Apple Store, Lululemon, Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, Williams Sonoma, and an AJ's Fine Foods. That's like their high-end uh, grocery store. And then what about some of the restaurants in the area? Um, there's in La Encantada there are several local restaurants like North um, which is an Italian restaurant, raw sushi bar, Blanco Cocina, and Frost Gelato. But also if you go across the street on the other corners of the um, that, that intersection, yeah. you'll find even more shopping. There's um, some art galleries, um, other shops. Um, there's quite a few restaurants that like Fleming's Steakhouse, Wild Garlic Grill. Um, a new one I've heard about is called Uptown Burger. I haven't been there, yeah, but... One of my friends was telling me that it was really good. And Tavolinos um, is a good Italian. And then Vivace is right near there too on the other side. So yeah, there's a lot of um, dining opportunities in that area. How far uh, is Basil's from there? Well, we're going to talk about Basil's later. We're going to talk about That's Basil's one later. Of, I like that place too. Okay. Um, so Another shopping area, which is a couple of miles south of that, located at Campbell and Grant, is St. Philip's Plaza. Um, it was built in the 80s. Um, it was actually designed by Juan Warner Boz, who... Um, he was Jostler's some, successor. Right. He, After um, Josias Jostler passed, passed on, um, the Murphys hired Juan Warner Boz um, to design some of their... Uh, projects. Anyway, so he was he worked on St. Philip's Plaza, which was built in the mid '80s. Um, it's a really cool little area. It's got a lot of shops again um, and restaurants. So I think there's like three major restaurants I can think of there: Proof Pizza, which has a nice outdoor patio. Actually, all three of them have nice outdoor patios. The Union Public right. House, Reforma, um, Modern Mexican, and then there's a little coffee house. And there along with well. the outdoor patio, oftentimes they'll hire local musicians and bands to play outside. So they've, they've got a nice shaded exterior space in general. Nice big trees. Yeah. So they'll often be bands and sometimes they'll even have like little farmer market type I things. think they do the farmer's market, market weekly and I think yeah. it's every weekend and it's a yeah. big deal. Um, so they have a nice central courtyard that just has a variety of events and different music musicians that play there and such. And then there's some just nice little local shops too. So it's it's kind of a neat um, mm -hmm. experience. And then it's funny because we've been there dozens of times and the last time we were there, we came across a, a sculpture. sculpture that we just never noticed. So <laughs> we'll have to include that later in the video. Right. Make sure we get a picture or some video of that for you. Right. So now going a little farther east, um, at Kolb and Sunrise, the intersection of Kolb, Kolb and Sunrise, there's um, a couple little shopping centers in that area. They've got a Bash's grocery store. They've got local restaurants like El Charo, um, which is a local restaurant that's been here for 100 years, I believe. And that location hasn't been here for 100 years, but in general, their original location, their original location first opened about 100 years ago, and it's um, very beloved by... Um, the town yeah yeah also um, gabi's i love gabi's it's like it's if i cook a good italian meal i compare it to gabi's because gabi's is kind of up there um but they it's a really nice italian restaurant they've got a really cool patio so that's a great place to go there's commoner and company 
There's Terra Alta Bistro, which is kind of like a local, um, they carry local wines that are made in Arizona. And they I think have, it started out as like their tasting room and then they had expanded to like finger foods and a light menu. For a while they were doing local um, musicians. They do a bunch of- I don't of, know if they're still doing that. I but. think they do. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just this little hole in the wall that's really a gem. I didn't even realize it was there for a long time. And I was like, how did I not know about this? <laughs> and then every time we go there, we run into two or three people that we know. I know. Kind of fun. Yeah, so, it yeah. is funny. Yeah. Um, and then there's a restaurant called Inca's Peruvian. I have not tried that, have you? I have not. Okay. So we we'll have to give that, that a try. Yeah. Yes. So more in the central part of the foothills, I would say, is... Um, located at Swan and Sunrise. Um, there's a Safeway grocery store. There's an Ace Hardware. Um, there's Basil's, which is another Italian restaurant. And not like are you guys starting to see a recurring theme here with the <laughs> Italian food restaurants or the what's, ones that we tend to like? What's cool yeah. about that one, I haven't been there in a little while, but so hopefully they haven't remodeled, but it's it old school. feels very old school. Like yeah. you just feel like you're going back in time and it's so cozy. They have cozy little booths and it's really fun, so we should go there again soon. Um, Bisbee Breakfast Club is a popular breakfast spot that's nearby. El Cisne Mexican Food, Feeney's Landing, um, Mona's Danish Bakery, Fiamme's Pizza, and then Trattoria Pina is a kind of a high-end restaurant there as well. Okay. And then finally, this is a little farther west, but um, in our local MLS, even though I don't really consider it quite foothills, the local MLS counts it as north, and that includes the foothills area too, so that's why I'm going to mention this, but um, Casas Adobe's Shopping Center is near Ina and Oracle. Um, it's got a Whole Foods there. Um, there's several local restaurants like Sauce Pizza, Charo Vita, Teaspoon Brunch, uh, Wildflower, and then there's a couple of chain places like um, Payway mm -hmm. and Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of shops like Chico's and Talbot's. And you know, we also forgot to mention there's mm -hmm. one other shopping center that um, is at River and Craycroft, so kind of the southern oh, yeah. part of the, With the Whole Foods neighborhood. It's got another Whole Foods. Nice library. There's a there. library there, yeah. which is kind of cool. There's a restaurant that's going to be going in there. It was a restaurant space before, but it's going to be re reopening. Did you read that in the newspaper the other no, day? No, but that's good to hear. And it's going to be, um, I don't remember, it's going to be Maria Mazon from Boca Tacos. Oh, really? She's doing some sort of thing there, and it's in, she's collaborating with somebody else, and I don't remember the details, but anyway... The location for the restaurant is fantastic cool yeah. because it's you kind of go upstairs and it has just this great city view from the top. But there's other restaurants there and there's quite a few local shops and stuff. And they also have a very convenient U.S. one of the big old school post office boxes in case you need to drop off your mail. <laughs> very important. Very. Like he's talking about the blue boxes, not like where you can actually pick up your mail, but where you drop <laughs> the mail off. Doesn't take much simple to get mind. you excited, Sim does it? Simple pleasure, yeah. <laughs> All right, so... What are we going to talk about now? Let's talk about the neighborhoods. I think that's probably why most people tune in. Right, so we'll save the best for last. So there's... We're only talking about some very specific neighborhoods. Um, we're missing a bunch of them, but this will there's give you <laughs> kind of an overview a little bit, hopefully. So first, let's start with Catalina Foothills Estates because that was the first neighborhood that was developed in the area. We mentioned before, Josias Jostler was the architect. The um, developers were John and Helen Murphy. Um, and in, you know, they didn't develop the whole thing. They still had a lot of lots afterwards. Right, there was 10 developments total and I believe it took about 50, 60 years for them all to be completed out. If well, and they're still not really completed. You can true. still buy a lot up there. They're here and there, and you can still occasionally find a lot that, that has not been built on yet. But it's the area where you're gonna find a lot of architecturally unique um, homes, mm -hmm. um, and kind of like with architects that people have heard of, or at least have heard of, regionally 
Um, they might not be household names across the country, but in Tucson. There's going to be a lot of the historic architecture that we talk about, and then some of the contemporary architects are still working in the area. So, yeah. Yeah. And as Larger far as lots. like historic districts, the only historic districts that are in the Catalina foothills would be um, the Warner two, two townhouse communities. Both of those were developed by Juan, or I'm sorry, were designed by Juan Warner Boz, developed by the Murphys as well. We'll have to include some photos of those because there's some neat statues at one of those developments, and he's got a great style. It's really yeah, it's striking. Really cool. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about hmm. Ventana Canyon, or do you want me to talk about Ventana Canyon? Um, I think you should talk about Ventana Canyon. <laughs> so Ventana Canyon is on. The, a little farther east um, in the Catalina foothills. It was first developed in the 1980s, I remember, because I was a kid, and I remember when Ventana Canyon Resort was developed and my mom was super excited about it. She wanted to go have lunch there, and then I remember in junior high, our choir singing there at Christmas time. <laughs> so cool. it was a big deal when it opened. I love the building. It's <laughs> Yeah, their building is cool. It's kind of um, like split concrete block. Yeah. Uh, so it's masonry construction and it's it's, it's cool. And it, and the location is beautiful. It's up on a kind of a hillside. Um, it's really pretty. So most of the homes in the area were date back to the 1980s and 1990s. Um, there is a man, most of the neighborhood is within a gated community, which is um, manned by folks instead of having just the, you know, code that you punch in. Mm -hmm. um, it's closer to Sabino Canyon, and there's a variety of types of homes that you can purchase, including townhouses, um, condos, and single-family homes. Ventana Canyon has a golf and racket club, so if you belong to the golf and racket club, there's, you know, obviously golf tennis, pickleball, there's a couple of pools, there's a fitness center, and they um, also have social events. And then there's also, well, we talked about Ventana Canyon Resort, but that's kind of a nice thing for the locals because there are restaurants in there. Sometimes they'll have musicians playing in the lobby or whatever, and it's a great place for a staycation. Um, there's also the lodge at Ventana Canyon, which is different than Lowe's Ventana Canyon Resort. So it's um, a smaller place, but, and run by a completely different company. Then we'll talk a little bit about La Paloma, which is in the central part of the foothills. There's gonna be condos and homes primarily. That was developed more from the 1980s through the 2000s. Parts of it will be within a um, manned guarded gate instead of just a, a gated community, there'll actually be a guard. Uh, there's a nearby resort. La Paloma Country Club has a 27 hole golf course, 10 tennis courts, four pickleball courts, an athletic club, and a lap pool. Over the last 10 years in Tucson, pickleball just has really Not taken just in off. in Tucson, it's everywhere. Probably everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Like anytime I go to Mo Udall or whatever on the weekend for a walk, like all of the courts are just packed. I saw the other day a listing where they had a pickleball court at their house. That's kind of cool. That was the first time I'd seen that. Yeah, makes so. sense. <laughs> um, Skyline Country Club is um, a little farther north in the foothills. It basically is about as high as you can get um, before you hit federal forest land. So it has amazing views. It was first developed in the 1960s. Um, the area is very hilly. Again, it's close to the mountains, so you get a really fantastic mountain views. You also get the really city fantastic city views, um, of course, depending on where the lot sits. Um, it also has a manned guarded gate, and it has a variety of houses, including townhouses and single-family single homes. And it has a lot of interesting architecture because it was built in the 60s. And you can find stuff that is newer as well. So it has a very large breadth. There's a variety of a, different architectural a large, styles. A large variety area. of styles yes. of homes in the area. And also a golf course. There is a golf course. They're, they have a country club. So the amenities that are associated with the country club include a clubhouse. Um, it's got dining. There's tennis. There's pickleball again. There's a pool, spa, fitness classes, that sort of thing. Very good. 
I'm also going to let Kim talk about Fairfield in the foothills because I think she has a soft spot for this neighborhood. I do. I love Fairfield in the foothills. First of all, I love masonry homes. And this neighborhood was developed in the 80s and it is full of masonry homes. It also has a large variety of homes you can buy. Like when I think of Fairfield in the foothills, I think of townhomes. However, you can find single family homes on an acre lot as well. It was developed in the 80s by Fairfield, um, who is a builder and who's actually still in business. But what's unique about the neighborhood is they retained about two thirds of the land is open space, which is unheard of. If they were to build this today, they would have it would have twice to double, twice to maybe triple the density. But it would have every acre would have yeah. would be used instead they built just along the ridge tops the homes have typically have fantastic views right. sometimes they have mountain views sometimes they have city views sometimes they have both but it, what's great about it is to get that type of view but also have a townhouse you know, you don't, you're not having to maintain as much. It keeps the price point down right. quite a bit. You're still in a fairly expensive part of town, but because they're townhomes, it feels like you're in a million dollar neighborhood where at the time of this recording, you can still buy a townhome for about $500,000 with awesome setbacks. The townhomes will share a wall, but how they constructed them, they're still very private and they staggered them so that each yard still retains an excellent view. You're not necessarily looking right at your neighbor's yard. You're you're seeing a great mountain view instead. Yeah, and even if you're not seeing the mountain view, you're seeing the green space in between. Right. You know, you there's a lot like the, there's a row of homes and then a green space and then a row of homes on this ridge top and then a green space. It's really cool. Fairfield is a big neighborhood, but within that neighborhood is I believe about 12 separate HOAs. Each one will have different amenities. So some will offer a community pool, some will have a community pool as well as tennis or pickleball or something like that. And then like, I think the ones that are just have the larger lots, single family homes, I don't think there's any additional amenities offered with those because a lot of those homes already have pools. And then just in general, it's a pretty convenient location, pretty close to shopping. So if you were right. to live there, you wouldn't be far from the errands you would need to do. You'd be close to good restaurants, grocery stores, things like that. Right. Um, so the last neighborhood we're going to talk about today is Hidden Valley. Um, so Hidden Valley is full of mid-century ranch style homes. Mm -hmm. It was developed in 1958 um, by Miller Homes. Wesley Miller along with his son, um, John Wesley Miller. And John Wesley Miller was a longtime builder who just died a few years ago. He was in his 80s at the time, but he also developed Savano, which is a unique um, neighborhood back in the early 2000s. And then Armory Park del Sol, um, which is in the downtown area, another um, unique neighborhood. But prior to all this, he kind of got his start um, in Hidden Valley. Mm -hmm. Where they got the name for Hidden Valley is it's kind of tucked into the foothills, but then there's another mountain in front of it. So it created what he called a hidden valley in that between the two mountains. Isn't there kind of a creek in the yes. area too? Yes, near Sabino Canyon. And it actually is along Sabino Creek. So the water that comes down through Sabino Canyon goes right past this neighborhood. And there's a they have a little private park that if you are a member of their voluntary HOA, you can have access to, um, which has, you know, the little, the running water and it's got a few picnic tables and some grills and a horseshoe pit. And it's probably a great place to hang out on a nice sunny day um, with yeah. a picnic. I like that neighborhood a lot. And the, the lots tend to be about a half acre to maybe an acre and a half plus. So it's not super dense. There's gonna be a lot of green space, um, mature trees, etc. So it's a very pleasant part of town to be in. And again, it's very close to a Bash's shopping center, some of the restaurants we had talked about earlier. It's not a far drive from that or Sabino Canyon. So there's recreation and errands very close by, and it is kind of a tucked away. And if you're interested in mid-century architecture, it's probably one of the more overlooked neighborhoods in Tucson, I would think, so. So it's also near 
Canyon Ranch that we mentioned before where the celebrities go to hang out. <laughs> Tell us how it is if anybody visits. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us again. We hope you found this video informative. If there's topics that you would like to see us cover, please leave a comment. Please visit realtucson.com. And if you would like to ask any questions about Tucson or real estate in general, Kim and I are happy to help. And our telephone numbers and email are in the, the description. And we are the ones that answer the phone. So please give us a ring. We look forward to talking with you. Bye-bye.